start here for the uh, panel four, which is on preparing the pipeline of resources. Uh, I know it's four o'clock, it's getting late, but we always save the best for the last. <laughs> All right, let me just <laughs> present here. Uh, I'm the first presenter. My talk is going to be on implementing and developing big data analytics in a K-12 curriculum at, an, at a preliminary stage here. I'm a teacher at Concordia International School, and Felicia Young is an English teacher associated with the University of Western Ontario. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, first let me introduce <clears throat> Concordia International School, Shanghai. We are an international school that is catered for the expatriate community in Shanghai, China. We are fully accredited by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges, the highest accreditation that you can have with international schools outside of the United States. We run the American program, and our high, <clears throat> we also run the AP curriculum as well. The student body is about 1,300 K-12, from the three-year-old all the way to the seniors. And as I mentioned, it's the school created for the expatriate communities. Yeah. We are located in uh, Pudong, Shanghai, which is on the same side as where the airport is, in case you wonder. All right, the presentation objectives for my talk here is on the importance of the big data in the K-12 curriculum, and also to present the high school pilot course. The need for big data analytics at the K-12 program. Question, does anyone recognize this picture here? Any idea what it is? Oh, that, huh? A rock, it's simply a rock. What kind of a rock is it? A white rock. William, what kind of a rock is it? A crystal, a rock, a crystal. Of what value is this crystal here? Ah, let me show you the next slide. What rock is this? <laughs> Eleanor. Diamond, what's the value of a diamond compared to the previous one? A lot more. The previous picture was simply an unpolished piece of diamond. See what the transformation is? This is what data is to big data. Data in itself is of very little value. But when you tabulate it, when you massage it, and you analyze it, it has got this much value. This is why it's so important that we've got to introduce big data all the way down to the K-12 program. Where can it be applied? Arts, business, economics, engineering, humanities, social sciences, and a lot of other fields as well. We are all experts here, and I'm sure each of you would have something to talk about in each, in each of its domain there. Who will benefit? Commercial, industry, academics, like ourselves, R&D, and many others as well. How attractive is it? What about job opportunities? That's what it's all about, isn't it? To fit into the job market. This is a piece of data that I got from Job skills, uh, e-skills, as Richard can relate to that. <clears throat> Let's take a look over here. An average UK median salary is about 27,000 pounds. Average IT salary, 42. Someone with big data experience, 55. Let's take a look at the percentages. There's a 31% in the premium over an average IT salary. 104% premium on UK medium job salary. This is why Big data is important, and there is a demand for it in the real world, in the job market. Job opportunities, it's no point just telling them is that this is how much you'll make, because money is not everything to a lot of people, but job satisfaction and jobs, jobs opportunities. Are there jobs for it? Yes, there are. Again, this is a piece of data from the e-skills in the, in the UK. 2013, 21,000 jobs. 2017, 47,600, about 222% increase. By the time 2020 comes along, 
we need about 56,000 there. This is what Richard was mentioning earlier on. So not only that it's attractive, but there is a demand for it as well. <clears throat> the natural pipeline, or natural preparation pipeline is that, pipeline is that the job market, we know that there's a demand there. Graduate schools are doing a wonderful job <clears throat> in cranking them out, but not fast enough to meet the job market demand. Undergraduate courses, they're beginning to be offering it. And last year when I was attending this conference, some schools are beginning to offer at an undergraduate level. What about K-12? This is the reality right now. A lot at the graduate level, a bit at the undergrad. K-12, zilch. All right. <clears throat> this is why we are here. We are here to talk about how can we feed into the pipeline. I had an interesting conversation with Kathleen Yes last night, and then she enlightened me to some of the things I was going to present, which may make it a little bit obsolete. <laughs> yeah, the program, the curriculum, the established K-12 program, these are the courses that I refer to as you know, typical math, physics, bio, chemistry. They're all established. There's syllabi out there. There are textbooks. There are teaching resources, heaps of them. There are different curriculums and pedagogies. They're very well established. Big data analytics? Nothing. Except for what Kathleen, was, Kathleen told me last night, that there is something out there. So I stand corrected on this. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> what are some of the issues here? The lower the level, the harder it is to teach big data. And why do I say this? Last year, as we were creating this course, I was talking to uh, professionals, professors from Department of Mathematics, Science, IT, Computing Science, Information Technology, and I said, we are trying to create a big data course at a high school level. They look at me and say, how much back math background do they have? Well, it varies. That was my response. Statistics, maybe one or two. You can't do it. Why? You need a lot of skills to be able to do big data. We never took no for an answer because it all depends on how you deliver the material. Just like someone would say, how can you teach physics to little kids? Well, of course it's possible. I mean, if you talk to a physicist, they'll be talking at this level. You talk to a undergraduate professors, they'll be talking at this level. But is physics being taught at high school, middle school, and elementary school? Of course they are. It all depends on how you cater it to your clientele. The same with big data. It can be tailored to the appropriate level. But the lower the level, the harder it is because of their simple mind. A lot of them have not got the enough information background to pursue big data. At high school, we just started this course. Middle school, there's plan for it, and elementary school. And as you will notice from these pictures here, see how high school is a little bit more formal? Middle school, a little bit more Crayola style. And the little kids play. Play is important. So we have to devise a strategy in how to bring big data from here to the little kids. That's the challenge for us as educators in the K-12 program. Two things I want to talk about from this presentation, the two initiatives. One is the paradigm shift in teaching, and two, a bit about this new course. What do I mean by the paradigm shift in teaching here? <clears throat> Some of us have probably heard of the term sage on the stage to guide on the side. This was a term that coined by Alison King in 1993. It talks about how traditionally, we as educators, we talk, student listens. Why are you, some of us, called professors? Actually, I look up the root, the meaning of the, the root meaning of professor. They profess, you listen. So traditionally, the teacher is up here, the students are there. But this is a paradigm shift now. It's going to be guide on the side. We as educators are going to stand on the side and we monitor what is going on. 
We let the student do the learning. As an educator, I cannot teach them everything, especially in today's world. Information, knowledge is evolving so quickly, faster than the textbooks can be printed. So to me, what's important is that there's a shift in paradigm in teaching that. We've got to shift how we deliver the material to the students. You teach a man, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. You teach a man how to fish, you feed him for life. What do you gain from this teaching method on Guide on the Site? You empower the students with independent learning abilities. And I have proofs to that as well. They feel a greater sense of achievement. They say, I learned this thing. I can do this course. I know the material. I can deliver this course. Now, I was looking at different teaching methodology for <clears throat> big data. Being a new course, hardly any information around. Information is evolving so quickly. There's no textbooks for it. How would I de deliver this course here? That's when Guide on the Site came in. Very, very powerful tool in delivering the teaching. Very suitable for this course because information is evolving so quickly. Last year, I think, when we were talking, we were talking about the four R's in big data. Now, apparently, it's already the, the five, sorry, the, the, uh, the four V's. Now, it's the five V's now. Oh, I stand corrected, <laughs> 15 V's. <laughs> Seems to have grown exponentially. <clears throat> now, so that's about the um, <clears throat> so paradigm shift. The pilot course, which I'm gonna talk briefly about, the big data analytics course at Concordia Shanghai, okay. I can safely say we are the first international school, at least in the Asia Pacific, to offer big data at high school as an elective. And thanks to William Wang, who initiated this course last year. And for some of us who were here last year for the uh, big data at Con at Las Vegas, you would have listened to what he has to say. What's the course objectives here? What are we trying to deliver? As I told you earlier on when I was talking to professionals, teaching professionals, how would you teach big data at high school? Impossible, you can, you don't have the tools, they don't have the knowledge. But wait a minute here, let's scale back and see what are we trying to deliver to the students. Came up with three objectives. Awareness, that they're aware of what big data is, when this, so they can know what the jargons are. Exposure. In fact, I talked to some of my friends who are in the working industry. I said, big data? They said, huh? What is it? So we need to create an exposure to the students, to the younger generations. And the third objective is applications. Yeah, you talk about this, all these new, this new subject here, but where can you apply it? Wow, for those of us here, we know the application is just enormous. It's almost like in everywhere, anything. The content and guidelines that were set up for this course, as teachers, we've got to come up with curriculum or in the process of developing a curriculum and it is driving questions as well. What is big data? How valuable it is? How can it be applied? What is the vehicle, the tool to actually process the data? These are some of the questions that was brought up. How the course was delivered? As I mentioned before, I used the guide on the site methodology, which is very powerful. You teach them a lot than they know. They may not realize it at that time, but it's after when they finish the course and they look back six months, a year later, they say, I learned, I know what it is. But during that time, it's very hard to convince the students to say that I'm actually trying to teach you a new material, a new course. To me, what's important is for me to teach you how to teach yourself. And also, with the peer learning, it's a very powerful tool as well. Get the students to teach themselves because they speak at a different level. They speak their language. They can understand each other better. We incorporated the lecture style as well, which William helped to deliver on a day-to-day -day basis. We had group projects, discussions, to mirror what it is in the real life because as engineers, as data scientists, you've got to collaborate, you've got to work in groups. Of course, project work as well. We have invited guest lectures with the contacts that we made last year from some of the um, professors, 
from different universities. We have industry partnerships, and thanks to IBM China, we have a student internship with uh, the Cloud Development Lab, so very much appreciated with, uh, to IBM. How do we measure? How do we take off the check marks? We use the uh, Bloom's taxonomy at the checkpoints to see where, at what level the students are. In fact, I can safely say all my students actually met the highest standard. Okay, they can apply it. Students' outcomes. So how do we know? How do I assess them if they have learned the material? No, we do not have tests. We do not have tests. We do not have quizzes. That only tells me that if the individual is a good test taker. I want product. I want you to show me what you know. Express to me what you know about what big data is. You will see that there are four posters up here. And these are some of the students' work. As part of the project, they have to research into their topic of interest, their personal choice. Because I don't want to assign them a topic, because if they're not interested in it, they won't give me the 150% on it. But if they choose the subject, the topic, they will give me 500%. And this is some of the product here on the posters presentation on their chosen topic of interest. We also have a presentations as well. We videotaped it, which will be played later on. Okay. And networking. This was something that I did not expect, but one of our seniors actually got hooked up with a big data professor from, is it Indiana University? Notre Dame. Okay. She, had, she already had a head start on a big data project, even before she started college. She already got hooked up with a prof. This was back in May or June to get a head start in the project. So there are a lot of good things that came out of it. We taught students how to present the material, how to present it coherently to the appropriate level, how to present the material, and more importantly, we give them a head start on networking, okay, how to actually feed into the system, the academic system there. Some suggested books. This was the book that we used as quote-unquote textbook. Very easy to read, gives a lot of examples and introduction to what big data is. Though is this is the one by Victor Mayer, Sean Berger, and Kenneth uh, Couclier. We have also using predictive analytics by Eric Siegel, and also predictive analytics, big data, uh, data mining, and big data by Stephen Finlay. So these are some of the suggested textbooks, because there is no textbook out there at the moment. The future work. For this year, what I'm planning to do is I need to introduce some programming tools. And between yesterday and today, in talking to some of you, it seems that there are some tools out there that we can actually use to actually expose students to the tools that we can use to how to process the data. Because last year, we were just in doing the three things, exposure, awareness, and application. But how do you actually do it? So I'm hoping to be able to introduce some programming tools. What but what good is it to do all the tabulation of data, but if you can't present it? You've got to let the data to talk to you. How, can you. how are you going to get the data to talk to you? Data is not going to have a voice to it. But we all have a vision. We all have a sight to it. So data visualization is the next thing that I will want to present in my class as well. And that concludes my uh, presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Question. What would I have wished is that they realize that they are the one who has to do the learning. It's not so much of the teacher telling the student, this is what you have to do, this is what you have to do. Okay, I'm not there to guide them, you know, to hold their hands, but to actually more of an independent learner, to get them to change their mindset. Because many a time students will come into class and expect that, all right, what are you going to teach me now? I'm ready to absorb. Here's my sponge. It's all open. Pour it in. 
So I wish that idea has been taught to them earlier on that you have to do the learning. But we as educators, how are we going to spark the learning in them? That's very important. If you can spark the learning in the student, they will do the learning by themselves. You don't need to teach them anymore. Does that answer your question? I would have liked them to have uh, more math statistical background, simply by uh, tallying up and things like that. Yeah, just to understand data a little bit more. Yeah. Question. Sorry, can you? Okay. To answer your question, the question is that will I be narrowing them at a too early a stage? Right? Am I understanding okay, correctly? No. The purpose of this course is to create awareness, exposure, and application. I'm not telling that you, the student, that you have to know big data. I'm just introducing the idea to you what is big data. Because big data is new, very new. It's going to be like... Um, Actual science back in the 60s or something like that. It's a new topic and people are apprehensive. People are afraid to talk about it because they don't know what it is. It's just like I was, see, I like photography. And back then when you try to take a picture, a pub, picture in public, people are going to say, don't take my picture. It's private. But these days you see selfies, you see pictures that are taken all over the place. People are actually immune to it already. And they know what a camera, they know what the idea is of taking a photograph, a picture. And this is what I'm trying to present here. Okay. To educate the people on what big data. I'm not telling that you have to know big data, but just to create awareness and exposure. And that's what I'm doing. I mean, it's just like, you know, you're teaching math, biochemistry, and physics. We offer them, we teach science at an early stage. If we teach science at an early stage, does that mean we're trying to get scientists out of it? No, we're just trying to create an exposure to give them a variety of what this is what life is in today's world. This is where we are heading. Okay, and um, I heard from uh, someone last year from IBM that says that we've got to embrace data. And I think, Dr. Wang, it was from you when you gave a presentation. You've just got to embrace data. Data is here to stay, and the data will speak for itself. These students, 17, 18,
Question, Alan. Yes, and uh, I'll save that for William to talk about later on. Yes, we did cover that in the course as well. We covered a whole spectrum of uh, what big data is. We did, in fact, there was no math involved at all when we were delivering this course. Question. Thank you so much for your question because <laughs> you actually brought up a very interesting topic here because <laughs> I was actually teaching statistics as well and I had a student who was taking my statistics class <laughs> and this big data course as well. So I have the same subject on two different courses. <laughs> if you could just be hold your... <laughs> anxiousness for a little while, I have something else to tell you about that. If you could just, okay. I'm excited, I'm very excited that you asked that question. I did not expect that question to come up, but it sets the tone for me to actually present the next evidence to that. I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you.